Hi everyone, this is Longwood Geek, aka Jerry here, and I just wanted to do a video. I was watching Lazy Game Reviews, and he did a video on covers for uh, video games that he really liked. And that kind of inspired me to do a video of video game novels that have interesting covers and, and well, that are just interesting in general. Now I'm going to link to Lazy Gamer's video down in the description below. So I highly recommend you check it out once you're done watching my video here. It's really good, and if you aren't a fan of Lazy Game Reviews, you probably should be. But what we're going to be showing you here is a bunch of my favorite video game novels. The covers and kind of some stuff about it if I've read it. Now, I've got a lot of books. And it's interesting when I go to used bookstores and even new bookstores, when I always look for video game novelizations. And it's amazing to see who's written them, uh, whether or not it's somebody who's renowned in the science fiction and fantasy field, or whether it's a newcomer. But there are so many video game novels over the years, I can't cover them all. But I'm going to cover at least a portion of my collection, maybe all of them if I get really bored. Uh, but I hope you guys really enjoy this video. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And we're going to go ahead and get started. All right, now the first one we're going to show you guys is this one right here. This is Sid Meier's Alpha Centauri, the GURPS role-playing game. A lot of people didn't realize this existed. I sure didn't. I happened to cross this at a Steve Jackson booth at a con, I guess about five or six years ago. And this is a great book. It's got some wonderful artwork featured from the game, uh, including expanded descriptions of a lot of the different um, well, elements within the game. There are uh, scenarios that you can do. Uh, I mean, it's it's a fantastic book. It's got a wonderful cover, kind of featuring the cover off the box of the game, which, in fact, I happen to have. If I can find it here. Here we go. So side by side here, you can kind of see that they basically took all of the elements from the Alpha Centauri box and put them in the graph, the role-playing games cover. So that's the first one we're going to look at. Um, like I said, if you're a fan of Alpha Centauri, I highly recommend picking up a copy of the GURPS book. It gives you, again, an expanded overview of the universe and even more detail and artwork. So if you're a fan, pick it up. Going along with the Alpha Centauri theme, there was actually a three-book series that was produced as well based on Sid Meier's Alpha Centauri. This is the first book, Centauri Dawn, by Michael Eli. I definitely recommend checking out. I haven't read them yet, but they actually look very, very good from the descriptions I've read, and I've got all three of them, so they're on my to-read list. So definitely check this one out. Did you know Star Control has its own novel as well? I haven't found any others. This one's done by W.T. Quick, but I do know that there is at least this one Star Control novel. Uh, it's based after the third game, so it's kind of a... I don't know if they were intending a fourth game and this was going to kind of bridge the gap between them or not, but it's a fascinating resolution to some of the conflict in uh, Star Control 2 and 3, so I highly recommend checking it out. Not the greatest read on the planet, but still decent. Now here's a name that a lot of si readers of science fiction and fantasy are going to recognize, and that's Diane Duane. She is a prolific uh, writer in the science fiction and fantasy worlds, and I mean she's written probably close to 50 or 60 books. This one is uh, based on XCOM UFO Defense. It's a novel based on the game, and it actually holds fairly true to a lot of the stuff that happens in XCOM. There's the sign answer, there's uh, going on missions. It's actually not a bad read. I would definitely recommend it, especially if you're a fan of XCOM. Now, if I wanted to go with Warhammer 40K, there are hundreds of Warhammer 40K novels, no, uh, novellas, and short stories. This one I picked because it is directly connected to the video game Fire Warrior that was available on the PlayStation 2. So I definitely, I haven't read it yet, but if you're a Warhammer 40K fan, uh, I would probably recommend checking it out. Um, it was the only one produced, so I'm not sure if that's an indication of quality, but one of these days I'll actually give you a full review on it and let you know what I thought. But you have to admit, the cover is pretty interesting, and it does feature the Tau, which is one of the youngest races in the Warhammer 40k universe. Now, I have to pimp this following book, The Dig by Alan Dean Foster. Uh, the reason I have to pimp this one is because Alan Dean Foster is going to be at Mysticon in Roanoke, Virginia this upcoming February, February 27th through March 1st. He's done a lot of video game novels and adaptations. Uh, this is just one I happen to really, really like because I happen to really, really like The Dig. It was a fantastic game with a fantastic story, and the novel actually expands upon it, which 
is a welcome addition. I definitely recommend checking this one out and reading it, if you, especially if you're a fan of The Dig. Now here's one that's got a fantastic cover, but I'm going to be really honest. Avoid this book at all costs, unless you're just putting it in your con uh, collection. It is based off Planescape Torment, and... I'm sorry, if you've played the game, you don't want to read it as a book. Uh, that's just the the way it is. And it's based on, it's not an exact interpretation of the game. So I really would not recommend reading this one. Collecting it, yes. Reading it, no. Did you know Turok was actually a uh, kid's novel series? They took the Turok Dinosaur Hunter game and turned it into a series of kids' novels. Yeah, and you can tell that they're kids because they're, oh, I don't know, about the size of a novella. And they've got the really kind of animated art, cover art as well. And, well, yeah, they're kids. It's a, And these were special editions. If I remember correctly, these were only released through Scholastic, uh, through their book fairs. So that's why you can only get them certain ways. So, I haven't read them yet. I'll try to give a review one of these days, but I have to admit the covers are pretty cool. Especially the one in the center with the really creepy alien. So, that's just me. Unreal Tournament even got its own, well, Unreal, I'm sorry, got its own novel. thought it was Unreal Tournament at first, but this is actually based on the CD-ROM game, the first Unreal game. So, I would highly recommend, if you enjoyed the game, checking this out. It's not an author I recognize, but it actually wasn't a bad novel. I've certainly read worse. I've read better, but I've read worse. It was fair to middling. So definitely check it out. The cover's nothing really to write home about. I mean, it just features one of the uh, digitized aliens from Unreal. But overall, not a bad novel. Peter Tellup is another one that's written quite a few in the science fiction and fantasy space. He wrote the Descent novels. There are actually three of them. I'm just featuring the first one here. Featuring a digitized representation of one of the power-ups of the game. Um... Overall, they were good. I've read all three of them. They really, they give you a story where Descent really doesn't. I mean, the Descent, Descent gave you briefings, but they really didn't give you a story. And this actually gives you a full story behind why you're taking out the mining drones on these different planets. So I highly recommend checking it out. Really good series, uh, really well written, and like I said, gives you a backstory that you kind of don't expect. Here's one that just disturbed me to no end, and I had to pick it up. Primal Rage, a fighting game, actually had its own novel series. Well, novels, novel, I guess I should say. I haven't seen a series of them. Again, written by John Vornholt, not somebody I recognize uh, in science fiction and fantasy, but, I mean, I have not read it yet, but, I mean, it's, it's giving a backstory to human dinosaur fighting action. I mean, how good is it going to be to begin with? So, I mean, it's not got a lot to work with. So, uh, I, again, this is one for your collection, but I'm not sure I'd read it. I'll give you guys a full review once I do read it one of these days. And I do apologize for the price stickers covering up the titles on some of these. The stickers that the used bookstore I got these from uses, unfortunately, are just very, very sticky and hard to remove. So I'm going to have to clean these book covers, probably with denatured alcohol one of these days, um, just to get the stickers off. Uh, please, if you're a bookstore watching this, do not use stickers that do not come off without a significant amount of work. It makes life so much more difficult. Now, this is a book based on the Wizardry uh, series by Brenda Braithwaite and Surtek. And uh, I haven't read it yet, but, it, I mean, it looks like it's it's one of those standard warrior out of time um, stories because you've got the guy with the jeans and the t-shirt fighting a monster in what looks like a, your standard fantasy realm. So I haven't read it yet. Um, I just picked this one up about two weeks ago, so I'll be reading it soon. But interesting cover, but it definitely looks like it's going to be one of those standard... Hell, a cyberpunk thriller. Yes, it was a game. I uh, don't remember if it was a very good game or not, but this one is a novel by Chet Williamson. Again, not one I've read yet, planning on it, but this does take directly from the cover of the game, Hell, a Cyberpunk Thriller. Uh, don't know much else to tell you. I'll give you a full review as soon as I can, but that artwork is just fascinating. All the reds and, and the reds and, and all that red. and Well, it's very red. Now, next we have a game that's not really... Well, actually, it did have a computer release, the Mega Traveler series. Um, this is the Traveler Gateway to the Stars by Pierce Askrigan. Uh, again, haven't read it yet, but this actually includes a module for the Traveler RPG. So if you wanted to, you can actually, based on this novel, run your own Traveler module. Uh, it's your typical sci-fi cover. Uh, it's the first Traveler novel, so uh, apparently there's more. I haven't seen them yet, but this is the first one I've run across. Definitely... It was good from the first chapter or two I read. I haven't read the whole book yet, but I'll show you why I haven't read all these books in just a second. 
Now, I'm I'm actually kind of surprised at this one. Uh, this is a King's Quest novel, and it's not by Roberta Williams. I was actually expecting Roberta or Ken Williams to have written this, but it's written by Kenyon Moore. Don't know anything about them, haven't read it yet, but it does look like it, it fits the King's Quest game. Um, it says the epic series continues, so I'm not sure which King's Quest this takes place after, but I'm, I'm interested to find out. Now here's one with an author with, like Dan Duane, some pedigree in the science fiction and fantasy world. This is by William C. Dietz, and it's the Hitman Enemy Within novel. It's the official novel of the blockbuster video game, and it pretty much features Agent 47 doing what he does, uh, manning hits, or, or hitting mans, or something. Apparently within himself. He is the enemy, or the enemy within? Yeah, go figure. Now, William R. Forstein, I've read several books of his, but I haven't read anything by Ben Olander. Well, that's not a problem, because this was actually a really good book. The Wing, entire Wing Commander book series, which totals about five, uh, about five books, I believe, not counting the movie novelizations, and, well, we don't talk about the movie novelizations. They shall not be named. Anyways... This is actually a really good book, and it's based on Wing Commander 4. So that's why you've got uh, Malcolm McDowell and I can't remember the other actor's name on the front cover. This is published by Bayon, who happens to be one of my absolute favorite book companies. Let's put it this way. If it comes from Bayon, even if I don't recognize the author, there's a 90% chance I'm buying that book. So that gives you an idea of how, um, how good a quality Bayon is. So please, check Bayon out, and check out the Wing Commander series. If you are a fan of the game, you'll love the book series. Now, Ultima is one of the longest-running game series, as well as being one of the longer-running MMOs. Ultima Online is still running, as far as I know. Well, this is the third book in the Technocrat War series for Ultima. It's based on the best-selling series of games, and it's by Austin Andrews. Again, not somebody I recognize, but... Nothing wrong with that. I have not read this series yet, but I do have all three books. It is on my plan to be read. So hopefully I'll have a review for you guys soon. I'm planning on reviewing as many of these as I can. So we're going to stay tuned for that. Ah, Command and Conquer. This is based off the Tiberium Wars game, and I've actually had the distinct pleasure of meeting Mr. Keith D. Candido. He writes a lot of Star Trek novels, as, as well as his own series and some video game and movie adaptations. Fantastic author. Highly recommend you check him out. Uh, I haven't read this particular book yet, but the cover, I mean, it looks like a Command & Conquer game. Um, when I spoke to him about it, he was like, yeah, you must have been one of the ten people that bought it. No, I was probably one. Of, I'm sure more than 10 people bought it. Maybe 11 or, or 12. Maybe. Brute Force Betrayals. Not a book I've read yet, but... Uh, and not an author I recognize. Dean Wesley Smith. Um, but the cover looks just like the game. Uh, this was the original Xbox game, uh, Brute Force. The, this is uh, a prequel to that game. So if you want more of the backstory to playing Brute Force, this is the novel you want to read. Again, it's um, not something I've read yet, but I'm planning on it. Uh, you'll see why in a few minutes as to why I haven't read all these novels yet. And finally, what video game novelization list would be complete without Myst? Myst has a series of books that are actually hit or miss. Uh, I cannot remember Rand Miller and David Wingrove, not two people I recognize. I will be honest with you, the missed books are hit or miss. Some are really good, some are really bad, but if you enjoyed the game or the atmosphere of Mist, I definitely would recommend checking them out. Uh, you can probably find them fairly cheap now, so pick them up, let us know what you think, and I'd be curious to see what you think. The quality is good, the, just the story itself is, is hit or miss. Now, I know you're wondering, well, Jerry, Longwood Geek, why haven't you read all of those books that you've shown? Why are you just showing them to us? Why haven't you read them? Well, the two shelves you're looking at are the reason why. This, my friends, is my book backlog. Yes, that is two shelves, each with two rows, back to back, of books I have to read. These are all to be read. Not including the ones that are on my video gaming shelf. Yes, there are many more than what I actually described in this video, and perhaps I'll do a, a second video 
maybe a third video on video game novels. I haven't touched on all the gaming novels, such as the Warhammer series, the Battletech series, things like that, because they're so prolific that I could not, they, they would involve their own videos themselves. And in fact, you can see some of the Warhammer 40k novels right above. But yes, definitely, there are so many wonderful video game novels that I really hope that you guys will check them out. Now I'll post some full reviews. Post your favorite ones in the, in the uh, comments below. Let me know what you think. And as soon as I get done with this, oh God, maybe I can move on to the others? Maybe? Oh God, the books, they're going to kill me.